10 random magic cards rated day number 34. Are you ready to finish the week, everybody? Hope, he, uh, hope your Sunday's been good. Hope your whole weekend's been good. If it hasn't, let's try to make it a little bit better. What's our first card? It is Silvos. Rogue Elemental, uh, printed in Onslaught and a couple of other sets. This is six mana, three and three green for an eight five Elemental Legend with Trample. You can pay a green to regenerate. It's simple and clean like Kingdom Hearts, man. A good magic card by a lot of accounts. Um, <laughs> you know, you get an eight five Trample for six mana, which is fine, especially in terms of like back then. That's a really good rate. <laughs> it's really not bad at all, dude. Um, kind of a take on other large creatures from that point in time, you know, like ancient silverback and even like force of nature reminds me of, cause you're paying six for an eight power creature. Um, and it's just better than force of nature. So it's a great magic card. <laughs> I judge everything by how good they are compared to force of nature. Um, I don't actually do that, but I like this dude. I think this is actually pretty okay. I don't think it's going in like any green commander decks anytime soon, but I just like simple creatures that are okay. And like an eight power trample guy that regenerates for a single green is pretty okay. Really cool um, cube card. I think this is a great cube card actually. I still haven't presented mono green cube, even though I've got most of the entire thing ordered. Um, it's enough cards right now. But I kind of want to order this card for cube, um, for, for spe specifically mono green cube. Um, I really like this, dude. I, I've, I remember this card from back in the day. Nobody played it back then either, <laughs> except for like some casual Timmies and stuff. But I still like it. I can't help when I like a card. I feel like this is one of the better like opening cards of the day that we've got in a while. <laughs> but I'm still just going to give it a 5.1, like slightly above average. If it were 15 years ago, I would have given this card like a 6.9, right? <laughs> but no, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. It's a 5.1. And that actually really saddens me. But I cannot say this is less than an average magic card because the average magic card is some sort of draft garbage. And this is not that you do draft this up it's probably the biggest bomb in your deck dude so i like it play the card uh moving on to spine rock knoll one of these hideaway lands it's got hideaway that means when it enters it enters tapped and when it does you look at the top four of your library exile one face down then put the rest on the bottom of your library you can tap this for red or you can pay a red and tap it and play the exiled mana or play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if an opponent was dealt seven or more damage this turn I always felt like this is one of the worst uh, hideaway lands. <laughs> and there's some kind of stinky ones too. It's like not all of them are great. But um, this did see a little bit of play when it was originally in Lorwyn Standard. For what it's worth, it was in the um, Mono Red Elementals deck. Uh, and sometimes that deck wasn't Mono Red. But I think it was like Red Green or something. But yeah, there was mostly a Mono Red Elementals deck. And it did play this card, but... I just don't see it going off that much. And like, if you were able to deal seven damage, you probably use combat tricks, pump spells or burn spells. And like, do you have the extra mana to play the hideaway card? Also, if you are mono red and you're dealing all this damage at one time, how high impact is the the card you hit away going to actually be right? A lot of the whole, the cool thing about hideaway is that you can get like free seven drops. Are you really going to be doing that in your aggro deck? So like there are some sort of, structural issues <laughs> with this card but i don't hate it i'll give it a 5.1 again like slightly above average no we no i'll give it a 5.5 we're playing commander i'll give it a 5.5 <laughs> and lands typically get a pretty high score but tapped lands only produce one color that's gonna that's gonna knock a, a point or two off you know We'll move on to Scrapyard Salvo here. Three mana only ever printed in New Phyrexia, but still very cheap. One and two red for a sorcery that deals damage to target player equal to the number of artifact cards in your graveyard. Ooh. <laughs> I don't remember ever having seen this card. I did play a little bit during New Phyrexia, but I don't remember ever having seen this. Um, this is really, really neat. Was this ever played in Eggs? Did I just miss where people played this in eggs? One of my favorite decks of all time. Why would you not play this in eggs? You know, it's a deck with a bunch of like zero and one cost artifacts that you can pop. They go into your graveyard and you do stuff <laughs> that facilitates other things happening. Synergy. Um, but I don't remember having seen this in any of those decks. And it seems like a like must include, like, especially if you have ways of copying it or bringing it back from your graveyard once you've played it. Like, it doesn't necessarily just kill one opponent guaranteed, but it can really, like, knock a huge hole in someone's life total if you did it right. So, kind of like it. But even if you're doing it right, what is it, 10 an opponent? 
right? Like, even if you have a buttload of artifacts, like, you're 12 you know? So is that actually good? And it only hits Dome, too. So as much as I think this is kind of neat in exactly the right kind of deck, you'd basically have to, like, turn your entire deck over to kill one person at the at a four-person table. So I'd probably just have to give this, like, a 2.2. Um, and it gets, you know, 1.1 of those points. <laughs> Half of that score, literally, is just for being a cool magic card. So... We'll move on, though, to Skull Duggery. This is a single black mana for an instant. Until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and a creature an opponent controls gets minus one, minus one. Trickily, uh, subtly, one of the better limited combat tricks you can imagine. <laughs> this thing blows people out all the time in um, limited, both OTJ and Ixalan limited. When it was originally printed in Ixalan limited, I remember a lot of people on Twitter talking about, like, dude, Pick Skullduggery. <laughs> the card is just a massive blowout like all the time. And nobody like accounts for it when they make blocks or whatever. So, um, yeah. I think this is a fine magic card, but really just in terms of limited combat tricks. So it's not it's not like a 5 or anything like that. I have to give it um, a 3.5, and that is mostly all its reputation in limited. <laughs> we'll move on here to Airy Bowmasters, four mana, two and two green for a three, four hound archer with reach and megamorph six mana. That means that you can cast it face down as a two, two for three mana, turn it face up anytime for its megamorph cost and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So if you pay a total of nine mana for this, <laughs> you get a four or five reach. This card is so bad. This is what I was talking about the other day when I said, you know, most, or was that today? I don't know. I get things mixed up. Because I record a bunch of these videos at the same time. You, you can tell I'm wearing the same shirt I was in the last two videos. So that's that's a little peek behind the curtain. That's how we make the magic. Recently, I said that most magic cards ever printed are draft specials. And we're kind of getting a little bit of that today, these last couple of cards. Uh, I have to give this like a 2 point. Two, I'll give it the same exact score, 2.2. It's a creature that can attack and block, blocks flyers. It gets at least a 2. Um, I'll go down to 2. At least that last card is cool. <laughs> this I'm not too sure about, <laughs> but we'll move on to Lidless Gaze. This is four mana, two, a black, and a red for a sorcery. Exile the top card of each opponent or of each player's library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards, and mana of any type can be spent to cast them. Flash it back for its mana cost. Um, this is another card I've never seen. Apparently, I haven't really combed through the Middle Earth Commander set <laughs> that much, like not as much as I thought I had. Um... This isn't great, though. This is, what, draw four for four mana, but you only have a turn to use all of them, so it's entirely possible that you only get to play, like, one or two of the cards. And then you don't get to play any of the cards in your hand. You're not, like, casting your commander if it's not already out, right? So, a little mana intensive uh, draw four, but technically better than harmonize and has flashbacks, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Some good things about the card, obviously. But I'm still, and like three of the cards you draw are not cards that you like plan to be in your deck that synergize with your commander, right? So I'm just, I'm not too sure, man. I will give this card a 4.9 though. This is definitely better than the last couple of cards we've looked at by like leaps and bounds, but I still think it looks like kind of like a trap, like a little bit, you know what I mean? So you guys let me know. Maybe this will be, yeah, this is, this is probably today's Ask the Audience. This is my lifeline. What, what what score would you give Lidless Gaze down there in the comments section? Because I think it's actually kind of a tough call, but I think it's just slightly below average. That's not true. Should we give the card a five? I'll give the card a five. I did it. All right, we'll move on to Dragon Lord Servant. This guy's awesome. Two mana, one in a red for a one three goblin shaman. Dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. Originally printed in Dragons of Tarkir, you can get it for under 50 cents right now that's actually great dude i love this guy like so much <laughs> and obviously he's really narrow he only goes in dragon and changeling decks really good in changeling decks let's not forget but um i'm gonna give him like a 5.5 you know just massively important role player in dragons decks and dragons decks tend to be pretty popular especially with newer commander players but more or less all commander players we just reviewed zergo and ojutai i said i wanted to play it as my commander see how that goes and um yeah, you put Servant in that deck. You get your Ajutai for, for four mana? Let's go. <laughs> Pretty sick, dude. I like this card. I've always liked this card. I always will. We'll move on to Vampire Lacerator. A single black mana for a 2-2 Vampire Warrior. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life unless an opponent has 10 or less life. This was in the uh, Mono Black Cube that we presented a couple of years ago, or about a year ago now. And, um, God, I love that cube. I still play out of that cube, by the way. 
I didn't just make it for that video. I'm st- I still play on a mono black cube, not all the time, but like once a month, you know, <laughs> I love that cube, dude. And this is a pretty good one drop. Um, even for vampire decks and commander, it's an okay one drop. Cause you just don't see a whole lot of one mana two twos to this day, especially in black. It's like this and carnophage and maybe like one or two other cards. Um, so it's not at a premium necessarily. And a one mana two, two is not as good in commander as it would be in like a 60 card one V one, you know, competitive environment. But all that said, um, you still have to kind of respect these when you do see them, you know, like what would I give Isamaru hound of Condo, or whatever it's called? Um, relatively high score. And that's a, that's a legendary, you know, <laughs> so when it comes to lacerator, I think I'm going to give this a 5.2, um, not again, not like the highest impact card in the world, but in specifically vampire commander decks that are kind of on the aggro side. Yeah, you do it. I've already put this card in a cube, so I know it's cubable and you know, I just better than a garbage draft card and probably a little better than the average magic card, to be honest. So yeah, I, I can justify that score. Move on to ragamuffin. This is three mana <laughs> only ever, ever printed in dissension, by the way. Uh, two into black for a 2-2 two, two zombie cleric with hellbent. Tap it, sacrifice a creature or a land, draw a card. Play this ability only if you have no cards in your hand. That's not very good. <laughs> like it wants you, it, it, it wants to convince you that it's good. It's got a important creature type. Also goes in clerics decks too. Sort of. <laughs> Depending on what kind of cleric deck you're playing. If you are playing like sacrificial clerics, which is a deck. There's like two cleric commanders that you can do that with. Then maybe you want to think about it, but I'm just not too convinced about it, dude. I am not too convinced. I guess it's neat that it lets you sack creatures or lands. You don't get that a whole lot. So if you want lands in your yard, I guess this helps you do that too. But altogether, you'd think a creature that taps to draw a card would be really good. But I don't think this actually is. Interesting it's never been reprinted in a, in a commander product or anything like that. So I'll give this a 4.2. Four? Uh, no, I'll give this a 4.7. Um, I think that's more correct. Just because, you know, tap draw card is powerful, but the amount of setup, you're not always going to be hellbent, dude. You're just, you think you are, you're not. <laughs> so we'll move on to Gargoyle Castle. Originally printed in Magic 2010. This is a land that taps for a colorless. Um, or you can pay five tap it and sack it to put a three, four colorless gargoyle artifact creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Man, we were already this wordy in 2010. We've been this wordy for 14 years. Put a 3-4 colorless gargoyle artifact creature token with flying onto the battlefield. <laughs> Just so many words. Um, this is relatively cheap, dude. I feel like I've seen this card, but did not remember it existed at all. <laughs> so, I don't know. In um, Oops All Colorless Commander decks, right? This goes. This, like, always goes. Like, no matter what. Guaranteed. But that's probably the only real place for it, dude. Five mana for a 3-4 flyer. I mean, it's a land that makes it, it comes it becomes a 3-4 flyer. It's not terrible. You don't have to only activate it at sorcery speed either. Like, you can do it at the end of your opponent's turn. It effectively costs six mana. And you have to, you know, wasteland yourself. So, I mm, like stone rain yourself, too. So, that's not super great. But it's actually not bad, either. This card is not a bad magic card. So, I'm going to give this a uh, 5.3 pretty narrow uses but in the decks again like a colorless commander deck or something like this should just auto auto include i think but yeah that is it for sunday everybody that's not bad i'm glad i was reminded of this card's existence i don't know that i want to order a copy or anything but like i like it can i like cards am i allowed to like cards on my own youtube channel anyway just let me know how you felt about all the stuff today ladies and gentlemen and i will see you bright and early my my bright and early probably around noon <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> noon my time est um for another video everybody we're gonna be doing these forever i know you love it tell your friends we gotta get more people on this this these bad boys <laughs> i love you guys i'll see you later bye <laughs>